Jonathan, I interviewed you uh, yesterday afternoon, and you said to start the 2022 season, I had you know four more races on my list, and this was one of them. Didn't get it last year. To cross the finish line first, finally, to get your second dirt late mile dream, just describe that in words. It's really hard to. You know, it's been a long time coming. It's been, what, eight years now. Um, you know, that was my first crown jewel, and so uh, – since then, we, we've added a few. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to, to be good enough to do it. But, yeah, it just uh, – it, it's weird. It's like something always happens at this race um, and just never good enough to get it done. But this was a, a weird track and uh, for Eldora. You know, Eld, Eldora never puts on a bad show, but it kind of did tonight. And uh, kind of like Knoxville, the only way I won it was it was a shortened race during the day. So a uh, little bit different, and maybe that's the only reason we won. But uh, – uh, at least her name's going to be on the trophy. Since, since the World 100 of 2019, you have six, six Eldora Crown Jewels. I mean, that is unheard of. That is just going to be a thing that probably a lot of people aren't going to do, and you have a chance to continue that legacy and streak, but you're pretty good here. Yeah, I don't know what it is that this place just fits me. You know, we've been off this year. Um, I mean, it ain't, ain't no doubt. And uh, we came here with uh, a, a different um, – the same car that we'd run here for two years. You know, this is the only place I run this car, so I figured I could come back here and um, pick my notes back up and just go to that. But for whatever reason, that still here, it it didn't work. I, I could tell from the first hot lap session, you know, just whatever's changed. I don't know if it's the gravity of the earth is different this year or, or what the hell it is. I'll have to talk to Scott about that. But just uh, we, uh, we, we tried to stick to our notebook the first night and just – just wasn't where I needed to be. So the second night, we made a big swing at it, and I felt like we got a little better. I got more balanced in, in the feature, and uh, so we just continued down that path, and that's what we did tonight. We had to we had to bring out a, a few old tricks ha out of the book and uh, some stuff we used to run way back in the day, and uh, it did help here. Um, I still feel like now, like I was scared to go as much as what I thought I needed because we was going to be on different tires today. We hadn't been on the, the 30, 40 or 3, 4, whatever, um, all weekend where we normally can put those on and, you know, get an idea of what we're going to have on Saturday night. So I didn't know exactly how far um, adjustments uh, we needed to go. But uh, me and Corey and Vinny uh, and Tyler and just the whole crew, um, Michael, we all talked and uh, decided, to, decided to go down one path and uh, we stuck with it and uh, it worked out for us. Those first 30 laps was a banger. You guys were all over the place, uh, multiple grooves there. Just take us through the driver's seat, just those first 30 laps when you got to the lead. Yeah, um, we took off, and uh, I felt better. You know, I, like once we went turn one, I, I, I knew we was okay. And then I just was real patient on the throttle and just trying to save my edges. And uh, just when everybody – when somebody would make a little bit of a mistake and I had a little bit of a run, I'd just try to capitalize on it. And uh, I almost stuck Hudson in the back straightaway wall one time. I didn't know he was up there, and uh, I, but I come down just in time. So just tried to uh, not make any mistakes and bend anything on the car, not get the quarter panel bent, not get up too high, and not to spool her off or anything, and just uh, – just let the race come to me. I knew once we, if we could have a long green flag run, we'd get to lap traffic, and the leaders would be in dirt as dirty air as what we was in running third, fourth, and fifth. So uh, we started moving around, and uh, I, I found the top in three and four where I could just kind of carry a little bit more momentum. Um, not exactly that it was any better. I think the bottom was just as good, but when we was in traffic, I just kind of got a little bit of clean air on my nose and where I could get a little bit of a run there. So we made a, a couple runs. I think uh, it's how I passed Bobby and then Mason Mason too. So, uh, yeah, just uh, lap traffic played in our favor, and uh, we got the lead at the right time. I, I had an idea it may rubber, but I didn't think it would rubber it as fast as it did. But, uh um, and then, you know, the caution come out. So um, you, you never know. This place is, is kind of weird. It, it's hard to see the rubber when it first comes. And it, um, I know last night it kind of left after uh, that first feature. Like it went away and then it came back again. Um, Chris Mann and I talked to him at One Lap, One Beer on Thursday, and he said his biggest rival in his career has been you. Just in the southeast, you guys always competing. Did you guys kind of feel like it was a Cherokee Sunday cruise? That's what he said to me in uh, the interview after the race here. It's like kind of old school a little bit. 
<laughs> that's the first thing I said when I got out on stage. I mean, it's just like a big gaffney. I mean, we, me and Madden run around, me and Madden run around here in the rubber. So I uh, got to thank Gaffney uh, for this win, you know. But no, it, it was cool. I, I seen Madden behind us, and to run in the rubber, you know, it takes a little bit different technique, uh, a little bit, and you have to. You have to kind of go back and forth on your tires to save them, to, to grind on one, to grind on the other, to make it fast. But I feel like our car was pretty balanced there. And it, it was more of a chess game for me to not catch the lap cars at the wrong time. Um, I, I was watching the, the video board when Madden would get close. And I would just try to run fast enough down the straightaway to make sure he didn't get a run on me. That way I could back my corner up to let the lap cars go. And there were several of them that obviously was watching the board too that they just moved out of our way. So um, I appreciate what they did there. But just uh, just trying to be smart and not get myself in trouble <clears throat> and, and run out of the rubber. Going into turn one and two with like three laps to go, it kind of looked like, uh-oh, is he going to ske skeet by the rubber? Did you feel that? Because my vantage point kind of looked like you kind of had to like do a different line than you did the previous few laps. No, not really. I, I I don't think so. I don't really remember exactly or, or recall um, that certain incident. But um, is it nerve-wracking when a track's like that? Just eight your marks all the time. It, it really is, because um, you, you you're just like in one posture and you're doing the same exact thing every lap. And uh, but like the rubber constantly gets a little more and a little more and a little wider. So you have got to kind of creep out a little bit or creep in. And uh, you know the, the the guy behind you obviously. Um, can see what you're doing, and then he can judge off of you what he needs to do. Kind of like I was the lap cars once I caught them. But, uh, no, for, like, I, I might have just turned a little more just to make sure that, that you know, I didn't push. That, that's the biggest thing. As long as, you, uh, as long as you don't push out of the rubber, uh, you, you're normally fine. But if you ever get your right front out of the rubber and your left rear is still in it, you know, two or three could drive by you at that time. Last thing is eight crown jewel victories here at Old Dora Speedway, tied with Billy Moyer. Scott Blomquist has 12. Late model nerds like me will be talking about this. Like, your name's going to be associated with Eldora even if you retire today. Just, does that mean something that all these people that are diehard late model fans can just talk about you 60 years from now? <laughs> I guess that's pretty cool. You know, that's definitely not what I started out to do. But uh, this place, is it just means more here for whatever reason. I, I love coming here, and uh, I feel like – I feel like everybody focuses on this race, you know, all the way through the year till we get here. You know, this is the first really, really big race. You know, we got the show me as a crown jewel, but Eldora is Eldora. It's just different. I don't know how to describe it or or put into words, but it's it's a place that I focus on more more than any really, and um, I've been waiting on it. I've been waiting on this race ever since we left here um, back in uh, September for the world. So. Just uh, can't wait to get back here in September once again. And this year I get to come here again in um, October. So uh, it's, it's looking more and more like I might be able to uh, just move to uh, Rossburg. That, that would be awesome, yeah. I, I, I've been wanting to talk to Tony about buying a spot over here in turn three because some reason I can't never get down here and park where I want to. I, I get up on the hill, but that, that's fine. Uh, me and Joe become, become buddies, so uh, that's all right too.